The Z-20 helicopter is a Chinese new medium utility helicopter, it is in active service in both Chinese Army and Navy. Western media reports indicate the Z-20 is a copy of the U-60 Black Hawk, one of the best-known helicopter in the world. However the Z-20 does have many parts significantly different from Black Hawk, including materials and key components like rotors. It is likely the only thing sharing between the two is the overall layout. This new generation utility helicopter has been developed since the late 1990s by Chinese Avic Helicopter Research and Development Institute. Both China's helicopter manufacturing plants were involved, the Harbin Aircraft Industry Group and Chang Aircraft Industries Corporation. The Z-20 project was delayed by the development of more prioritized Z-10 attack helicopter. Technical problems also resulted in setbacks, such as suitable turboshaft engines. The project finally had its major breakthrough around 2010, receiving flight approvals. Then a prototype of the Z-20 helicopters made its first flight in 2013. In 2016 the Z-20 helicopter was reported to be going throughout testing flights. In 2017 more images of this new helicopter surfaced. This was believed to be an indication that the Z-20 helicopter was already in service at the time. In 2019 it became clear that this helicopter project enters mass-produced stage. Once it reaches sufficient numbers, the Z-20 will replace current Chinese Army fleet consisting Russian Mi-17 helicopters and older Z-8 helicopters. China media reports claim that the Z-20 has proven its capability and easy-to-control design. The Z-20 is closely resembling the American Sikorsky S-70 Black Hawk helicopter. The Black Hawk is a widely used military utility helicopter, most in the U.S. Army, where it is known as the U-60 Black Hawk. The export variants of Black Hawk helicopters is widespread in the world, including S-70C2 model being sold to China. It appeared that Sikorsky provided ongoing support to the Black Hawk helicopters in China for civilian use, approved by U.S. Congress. However Chinese Black Hawk helicopter did perform many military missions. A total of 24 Sikorsky helicopters were obtained by Chinese, but for decades Chinese army desperately need new helicopters. Before the Z-20 entered service, China purchased large amount of Russian Mi-17 helicopters. The Z-20 made its first flight almost three decades since China first received S-70 helicopters. The Z-20 helicopter can carry about 12 to 15 soldiers. Payload capacity is around 5,000 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms internally, and 4,000 kilograms externally. It can also carry newly developed lightweight Hoitzer, similar to USM-777 Hoitzer. The utility helicopter can be armed with machine guns and other weapons, photos have emerged showing a Z-10 carrying AKD-10 anti-tank missiles. The missiles are guided by semi-active laser sensor and have a range of roughly 10 kilometers, are said to be similar to the American M114 Hellfire air-to-surface missiles. The Z-20 has a nose-mounted infrared thermal imaging sensor turret. More avionics systems can be added, including naval mission suite and electronic warfare suite. The Z-20 has quite a few major differences comparing with the Black Hawk. It has an European-style five-blade rotor, the Black Hawk has four-blade rotor. The Z-20 has wide cord composite rotor blades, mating with two powerful engines, translate into additional lift capability. The five-blade rotor has advantage comparing the more traditional Black Hawk rotor design, it is more reliable, less stress on each blade, less noise and vibration, therefore much better for combat usage. It seems that the Z-20 has much more advanced materials and panel manufacturing techniques. The radar dome, cockpit shape and canopy layout, tail layout, and more details are different between the two. The rotor built with anti-icing and de-icing technology allows Z-20 to fly in high altitudes and harsh low temperature environment. It is speculated that the Z-20 initially powered by Pratt & Whitney PT-6C-76C turboshaft engines. It is shifting to use two WZ-10 turboshafts, producing around 2,400 shaft horsepower each. Some sources report that transmission system was assisted by Eurocopter. Chinese media reports that the Z-20 will receive more modifications soon, 
to improve its combat performance. Online sources indicate the Z20 project is aiming at achieving the same power output as the current generation turboshaft engines on the U.S. Black Hawk helicopters. The U.S. Army is running T-700 to 701D engines on current generation Black Hawk helicopters. The previous T-700 to 701C engine, commonly used for the last 20 years, is a 1,900 shaft horsepower engine. The upgraded 701D engine can achieve up to 2,000 shaft horsepower, adding an extra 100 horsepower. That would be the ultimate goal of the Z-20 engine development project, to match the level of U.S. turboshaft technology. And there is a plan to add refueling capacity to Z-20. A manufacturer promotional video shows a computer-generated images of a Z-20 armed variant featuring two wings, each equipped with four missiles, a rocket launcher, and most importantly a refueling probe to the right side of the cockpit. The Z-20 can be modified to serve in various military scenarios. Some videos have shown a naval variant with close-up photos and videos. The Z-20 is developed by the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, it is believed that it will be exported by China National Aero Technology Import and Export Corporation. Media report claims that it is 100% made in China. The Z-20 has much better power-weight ratio comparing with the Mi-17 helicopters, therefore it is better suited in high-altitude areas in western China, including Tibet and Xinjiang. It is believed to be able to carry full load and operate from altitudes of over 4,000 meters. It has been carrying out missions in regions above 4,000 meters above sea level and in adverse weather condition. Let's look into the avionics of the Z-20 helicopter. There is no doubt this aircraft has the latest technology in this area. The Z-20 definitely adopts advanced glass cockpit, all-digital avionics bus, and network sensor suite. It is unknown if it has fly-by-wire controls, but if it does, it is not really a surprise as China has been using this system on other military aircrafts. The glass cockpit design made a huge difference with pilots. The Z-20 is the first Chinese military utility helicopter to go fully digital, almost all analog technologies from previous aircrafts have been replaced, this also helps with maintenance and upgrades. The digital platform also helps the Z-20 with the latest aviation mission planning practice. This enables pilots to plan a mission in the base with easy-to-use commercial computers, even mobile devices, process, transfer, and store mission data from command center, to pilot devices, to the aircraft itself. This allows the Z-20 crew to pull up and consume maps, graphic displays and other mission essential information with ease in an intense flight and fighting scenario. It increases the efficiency in training, review, and battlefield information data recording. There is also online discussion about a possible Z-20 stealth variant. For now the Z-20 does not in any way appear stealthy, however comparing with Black Hawk, it does have a rounded nose and a conspicuous absence of sharp external structures, along with a few other noticeable characteristics that might reduce radar signature. The fuselage panels appear to be close some Eurocopter design, they are not in a straight vertical position, but tilted a bit, could help with reducing radar wave reflection. But the online discussion is more about a dedicated purposefully designed stealth variant, similar to Black Hawk stealth model used in anti-terrorist trade in Pakistan. It is logical to develop such a variant, considering Chinese special forces might want to operate in hostile environment in the coming Taiwan Strait War. Overall the Z-20 is a major breakthrough for Chinese aviation industry, bringing the Army and Navy helicopter units to modern age and no longer rely on Russia or any other foreign country. It is considered in Chinese political and military circles as one of the most important air combat platforms. Let's talk about the strategical value of Z-20 helicopter in the possible Taiwan Strait conflict. The strategy of using Z-20 fleet is believed to be an essential part of possible Taiwan Strait war planning of Chinese Army and Navy. Chinese Army has been buying a lot of new helicopters, mainly from Russia. As in, hundreds of Mi-17 helicopters in just a few years. In 2011, China had 207 Mi-17 and Z-8 helicopters, 136 Z-9 and Z-10 attack and scout helicopters. 
10 years later it has more than 400 Mi-17 aircrafts. Combined with domestically developed Z-20, upgraded Z-8 large utility helicopter, and smaller Z-9 helicopters, it can form a sizable amphibious assault air combat fleet to cross the strait and land large amount of troops in Taiwan within hours. The development and acquisition raises a prospect that the Chinese military can start a major air and sea campaign against Taiwan, with hundreds of utility helicopters escorted by around 500 Z-10 and Z-19 attack helicopters, large amount of landing ships sending marines, and fighter and bomber jets providing air cover. It is reported the Chinese army has prepared at least 400 utility helicopters in its inventory and they can easily fly back and forth across the 100-mile-wide Taiwan Strait, ferrying troops to the battlefield, including directly dropping troops to key Taiwanese targets well behind the front lines. With Z-20 enters mass production stage, the number of helicopters can join the battle is expected to reach 1,000 within one or two years. But there is no question a major challenge will threaten this Chinese air fleet. Taiwan Island is described as one of the most defended area in the world, especially protected against air assault. It could be a difficult battle considering the large amount of anti-aircraft missiles deployed in Taiwan, including portable U.S. Stinger missile proven to be effective against Soviet helicopters in Afghanistan. Therefore Chinese Army determined the Z-20 will be carrying advanced countermeasure suite from the beginning of design stage. Planners would have to assume some loss of helicopters in each sortie in the Taiwan battle. An air assault across the Taiwan Strait might be costly, but it definitely doesn't mean the Chinese military will hesitate to follow through. It's one reason that China invested billions of dollars into helicopter fleet, making Z-21 of the most advanced platform in this class. Still China has a lot fewer helicopters than the U.S. Army. In fact it is only a third comparing the U.S. But it's worth pointing out China can only focus on Taiwan Strait, while U.S. has a global demand of military deployment, therefore the current Chinese helicopter fleet, including Z-20, is quite sizable considering the battlefield is restricted to the strait. In theory, the fleet lift tens of thousands of soldiers in successive waves over a 24-hour period. It is highly complex scenario requiring significant Chinese military joint integration, originating from the highest levels of Chinese political circle to military command, down to individual units, with advanced and networked prepared air combat platforms like the Z-20, Chinese military decision makers will have much greater power to plan down to the tactical level of unit coordination deconfliction, and synchronization. To achieve the objectives in the Taiwan Strait, Z-20 is considered as the backbone of newly established Chinese air assault brigades. There are around two to three brigades already in service, more to come in these few years. Same as Black Hawk, the 10-ton class Z-20 is the best option to ferry troops, while 13-ton Z-8 and Z-18 large-size helicopters take on a slightly different role, focusing on less intensive transport missions. And of course, the brigades can only engage the enemy after the Chinese Air Force and Rocket Force had softened up Taiwan's defenses. Flying hundreds of Z-20 as a combined force require extreme skill and planning techniques, Z-20's overall package makes it highly suitable, especially the advanced battlefield network technology making it easily adapts into a cross-platform, cross-service battle networking system. This does not ease the difficulty approaching landing zones when Z-20s swam the enemy all at the same time, even without high-tech missiles, enemy will still be able to fight back with small arms and portable shoulder launch missiles. That means it is expected Z-20 fleet will suffer major loss in the battle. It is worth noting Taiwanese terrain is far from ideal for air assault, it has a major mountain area across the entire island and heavily covered by forest, all urban areas are packed with obstacles like residential buildings and power lines, far from the open space available Iraq or Afghanistan. Z-20 is packed with navigation and low-altitude obstacle avoidance sensors to face the challenge. Considering what we observed from existing Z-20 photos and videos, there seems to be ample time to plan overcoming terrain and air defense from Chinese side. Some Western experts claimed that Chinese air assault planners could simply assume the first wave of Z-20 helicopters would be lost, similar to landing ships' experience on Normandy beaches.
but if Chinese Air Force and Rocket Force can defeat Taiwan Air Defense System prior to that, Taiwan Defense System might collapse when Z-20 fleet cross the strait. This is also proven in Iraq War, when Iraqi troops simply gave up because they lost air support immediately when the war broke out. A significant benefit of using Z-20 fleet is the diminished risk for placing huge amount of landing ships in the narrow strait and heavily mined beaches. There are limited amount of landing sites for Chinese Navy and Marine ships, Z-20 would provide a much more flexible option, including direct assault on key Taiwanese targets far away from the beaches, breaking the spirit of defenders. That would clearly increase overall survivability for Chinese troops, aircrafts and ships, achieving the transition to a stability operations. We can observe that despite many setbacks and limited prior experience, China can without a doubt motivate its military force and industry to come up with new plans and innovations to march close to its historical strategy goals. I sincerely hope peace can be maintained between the Taiwan Strait and conflicts are resolved in peaceful negotiations. However, the Z-20 project proves again China does not hesitate to do everything in her power to secure its long-term achievement. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe, share and comment. It will really help us developing this channel and bring you more videos about Chinese military news. Thank you.